Cold Steel Frenzy, should you buy this knife? Hey guys, Carter here. Welcome to Edged Mindset. Welcome to the dungeon where I'm shooting this video. We're going to take a look, a closer look at the Cold Steel Frenzy. So this is not a new knife. However, it is fairly new to me. I was late to the game on this one. Always struck me as something kind of cool and uh, eventually just went for it. So uh, for those that are uninitiated, new people to the channel, people that just stumbled upon this video, I'm a weirdo, so I primarily collect right now in my collecting career, uh, very subject to change, everything is subject to, to change, I primarily collect automatic knives and I primarily collect mid to high level automatic knives. However, Colt Steel just has a place in my heart. They always have. If you go back to my videos from nine years ago, ten years ago, you'll see Strider Customs. You'll see uh, very respected Maker Customs. You'll see high-end productions, and then you'll see Colt Steel. I just, I've always liked Colt Steel. So let's get into it. So what do we have here? We have a giant frickin' knife with a Warncliffe blade, or maybe a sheep's foot blade. I think Warncliffe. Uh, is the better name for this, um, but a nice, it almost looks like it actually has a slight recurve. Uh, let me, I don't know, it does. So it actually kind of recurves in, let me get it on there. I don't know if that's intentional or just poor sharpening, but uh, it does have a very slight recurve, making it more of like a talon type blade. But let's do some specs, first and foremost, specs. That's what's on my list. I need lists so that I can stay on topic and I don't make videos that uh, spawn or sprawl on for too long. So blade length, five and a half inches, like six and a quarter to the pivot. Super long blade on this thing. Overall length, 12 and a half inches. This thing is a monster, but, but you may say, oh, why would, why would you ever carry something like this? It's got to be so heavy. Uh, no, super, super light, super light. 5.7 ounces for a blade this big is, uh, insanity. It is insanity to me. Um, and that's one of the things Colt Steel's good at, right? The, the triad lock allows them to make insanely robust knives that are proportionately very, very light. And this one is no exception. The reason it's so light is... What's going to take us into this next section here, which is quality and materials. Overall quality is on par with everything that Cold Steel's done. I've mentioned this before, uh, but since they were acquired by, I forget the name of the company, so uh, Cold Steel was purchased a couple of years ago. Since they were acquired, I've noticed, personally noticed no differences in quality. It seems like it's the same Taiwan quality they had before. Which makes sense uh, because they didn't switch manufacturers. They didn't switch factories. The only thing that could have changed maybe is some QC processes and things like that. But like I said, I've, I've had no issues. I've, I've bought a number of Colt Steels since they were acquired. And I uh, haven't noticed any problems or QC issues or anything than before. Um, now that being said, it, you know, you're, you're still dealing within the price range of these knives. So you're not going to get mid-tech or custom level quality uh, but it's still good. Taiwan makes some good knives. S35 VN steel on this one, I believe. Let's double check before I, oh, it is not, uh, uh, yes, it is. It's, I was like, it's not marked S35 VN steel. If we can focus right underneath that logo right there, Taiwan S35 VN steel, giant, giant blade. We have G10 handles and look at that. It is basically just solid G10. There are no liners in there. There's no extra weight in there. Aluminum backspacer here, and then just the steel lock bar. So very, very light in the handle. Balance point is like right at the choil right there. This thing feels so much lighter than it actually is because of its size. Very sleek design. Pocket clip that is reversible for right hand, left hand, and of course this lock is ambidextrous as well. Ambidextrous thumb studs. So if you're a righty, if you're a lefty, you can carry this very large, threatening, and odd knife till your heart's content. 
the G10 is blue and black layered. It looks really, really good. It's contoured. So you get these stripes right here. That's what that is, is this is contoured down. So as it contours, it hits the other layer of black and you get this black stripe along with these grooves right here that do the same thing on a smaller scale. These uh, scales are just fire, straight up fire. One of the reasons I jumped on this was just how cool it looks with those, those scales right there. And it's actually quite functional. So if you put this in this grip right here, you got your front finger going up on this choil. My other fingers fall in line with these, right? So this isn't just visual because it looked cool and it does look cool. Uh, my fingers actually fall perfectly right in here and you get an excellent purchase. So you get kind of the benefit of smooth, comfortable scales that look nice. This is not grippy. This is all sanded and then sandblasted, I believe. So very minor texture. It's not super slick, but it's definitely not grippy G10. But because of these grooves here, it gives you multiple carry ways and it's all very secure and comfortable. You can choke back like this and just put all four fingers here. You can do these last three right here. You could even do just two if you're really trying to get a lot of reach. Uh, I don't know why you would do that. Probably not for utility cutting, if you know what I mean. Uh, but a lot of different options for holding this knife and they're all super comfortable because despite it's kind of impressive extreme aggressive look. It's a very simple knife, right? It's just a, a nice cylinder here with some mild contouring. Um, in fact, it's actually quite impressive how cool this thing looks or how interesting this thing looks when really it's, it's a fairly simple, simple knife. Uh, and you get one of the most annoying logos etched on the blade that I think I've seen in a while. Um, not only did they do a goofy font with a goofy name, like Cold Steel's known for, but they also canted all those letters. So it looks like almost like a, a Halloween store or something would use in their, in their signage. Uh, Cold Steel and maybe ADV Tactical have my vote for kind of the worst logo names on blades, not only positioning, but also the name and the fonts used. It's, it blows my mind every single time. I've come to accept it. If I buy a cold steel knife, it's probably gonna have a goofy name with a goofy font. It's part of the, part of the deal. You know, when you, when you join the sacred clan of mall ninja, uh, people, that's what you get. But anyways, I love cold steel. You got a fuller up here, reduces weight, maintains strength, usual stuff, looks nice. Uh, double thumb studs, I think I mentioned that. In terms of usability, it's the same as every other uh, triad lock. So extremely strong, very, very strong, especially for the weight that it adds to the knife. However, the downside is it's not like flickable, right? And it can be difficult to close one-handed. What a lot of people do is they put their index finger as far forward as they can. They depress the, the lock and just hope that the non-sharpened choil is what contacts their finger and allows them to close it one-handed. I, you know, that's some advanced technique there. I would recommend on all triad locks, just get used to closing them two-handed. Um, I don't know, that's up to you, how risky you wanna be. One of the benefits of the new lock that they're using, the Atlas lock, which is not on this knife, is it's much easier to close one-handed. But it has other drawbacks. I've, I've spoken about that before. Uh, tip down carry, or no, tip up carry. What's wrong with me? I am completely dyslexic today. Tip down carry, reversible clip, I already mentioned that. Uh, Cold Steel designs their knives pretty well in terms of as they get bigger, they make sure and move this clip down so that they can fit in pockets. Now, it's not going to fit in every pocket of every jean you have, but if you have large pockets in your pants, uh, they should actually fit in there. It's always impressive when cold steel knives uh, can fit in pants because um, I've got some like this Raja 2 here that is just a behemoth, and I can actually put this in most of my pants. I mean, it's not comfortable. It takes the whole pocket, but it'll fit. And that's because look how low this pocket clip is. So they make sure and keep kind of that distance relatively the same. In fact, if you look at that, uh, the Raja 2 would actually carry better than the Frenzy in terms of just not bottoming out in your, in your pocket. And it has a nice, uh, a lot lighter of a triad lock on there. But anyways, I digress. This video is not about that. It is about the Frenzy. What is this knife for? Well, let's be honest. 
it's primarily geared towards self-defense. I mean, really, that's what it is. It's surprising they didn't put the wave opener on here, like on the Raja 2, um, because that's the primary usage of this. Now, of course, with this slight recurve on here, it's razor sharp. This would destroy boxes. Um, this would destroy material you're trying to cutting. The problem with this, though, is the blade is so long, you're going to want the material, and it's going to want to ride somewhere around the middle. And this is a lot of blades sticking out the other side of the material. So you have to make sure that you're not cutting things that you don't intend to cut. Um, so I, this would not be my top choice for doing work on cardboard or paper or something like that. Um, it is kind of more of a, a fun, cool piece to have. And uh, the design is geared towards self-defense. So... The design is. Now, I'm not saying that this is a self-defense knife. I'm just saying the design is based off something that would be akin to uh, kind of the self-defense world. Would I recommend this knife? Should you go buy this knife? I think you should. I think it's cool. It's fun. If you can get it on the secondary market, you'll be able to pick this thing up sub 100 bucks. S35 VN steel, a lot of it. Really light, really cool looking. It's just kind of a cool piece to have in your collection. Obviously, if you don't like cold steel, then you're probably not even watching this video. So this doesn't pertain to you. Uh, but in terms of cold steels that are aggressive looking, looks good, they're fun, this is one of the better values, uh, especially with the size that they offer, right? They offer a lot of cheaper knives, but ones that are kind of this out there and this cool uh, this is one of the better values. All right, guys, let me know down below. What do you think of the cold steel frenzy? Would you ever buy one? Would you ever carry one? That's what I really want to know. Would you ever carry something like this? Let me know in the comments down below, like subscribe, thumbs up, all that stuff really helps. All right, guys, I'm outie.